Dino D Family Man in the Philippines. Today we're going to show you the uninstall or removal of the AMD Ryzen 2400G Ray Stealth Cooler heat sink from the processor. And then we're going to show you how to install the Deepcool Gamex GTE RGB CPU cooler. So on to the video. So here we start. I want to get my long screwdriver. Because it's going to take a long screwdriver to be able to screw these screws down. So, just for safety's sake, we're going to take our memory out of here. It'll be a little easier to work with. The OEM fan and heat sink. Put that to the side. Then we take our uh, fire cables that we plugged in for our heat for the heat sink. The fan. Find our cables for the heat sink fan, which one is, looks like is hiding right there. Alright, let me just unplug it. And now we can take our screwdriver and unscrew our OEM heat sink. I like to do opposite sides first. I'll try to do this kind of as quickly as I can. So you're not bored with this whole unboxing thing. I heard a clip noise, so I know those two are loose. Now we'll go to these sides. Loosen that up. Loosen this side up. That should be loose. Make sure they're all loose. And we're going to make sure everything is loose. Twist a little bit because you got the heat sink compound on the bottom to break it loose. So we got our alcohol, we've got a, some tissue here. We're going to clean the CPU up, get the old heat sink compound off of it. Might need a couple of wipes, extra wipes on there. Make sure you don't leave any tissue behind. Alright, that's all cleaned up now. No, we do not need to take the processor out. We do have to take the other side cover off though, so we can put the other mounting plate on. So let's recheck for fitment again, make sure it's going to be okay. Put that down inside of here, and it looks like that's going to fit just fine. You need for a case, you're going to need at least a mid-size case, one that's wide enough to mount this onto. So we're going to check fitment of our connectors. I'm pretty sure we'll need the long one so that it will fit like this. We can install the new CPU cooler in that direction for making the CPU in this direction so it makes the air flow from the front to the back and then out from this fan and that fan. The cooler Master brand that I looked at, which was similar to this, sits like this. 
I don't know about you people, but I don't want heat going that way. Up into this fan would be fine. But it has a fan that mounts on this side, so it would help keep your graphics card cooler, maybe. But this gives you a better airflow going front to back. Alright, we'll open up our handy dandy package of screws, nuts, and bolts. Alright, here's what we have. Is this small screw right here, or a standoff basically, that six sided, and that's what's going to go into this plate right here. Now I'm not sure if you can see it or not, but they have markings here for AM socket and AM4 socket. Alright, so when you have your standoff in there it should fit flush just like this is flush put two of your standoffs in you want to check and make sure you got them in the right spot and they're there matched up so now we put the other two here in here. You turn them sometimes a little bit to get them in the right sp spot. And they will match up. There. Snapped in place. All four of them now. <clears throat> so now what you're going to end up having to do is use two hands. So you're going to put that in there just like this. And then on the other side, these screws or standoffs will hold the plate in place. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed and it was helpful to you. Maybe one day you'll have to replace a CPU heatsink cooler for yourself. It's all basically the same. If you can take one off, you can put another one on doesn't take that long. So if you enjoyed the video please subscribe, click the like button, leave a comment. Don't forget no matter what you're doing you're doing it with somebody else.